Now the more advanced brush properties are now found underneath that arrow. So if I click on this to show extended properties, now all of a sudden I have a huge selection of new things. And, it, and I think it's smart that these are hidden away at first because it can be kind of overwhelming. You don't always need these options. So we could jump right into these. Uh, the first is just your general preview like we had before showing you, giving you a, a general idea of what kind of stroke that you're going to have. These palettes are collapsible. Your choice here is to pick the maximum size and the minimum size by a percentage. And I really like that because the fact that the minimum size is a percentage of the stroke means that this brush is going to scale. It's going to have the same qualities no matter how big or how small it gets. Now the smoothing, the level of smoothing is a property that's only found in vector brushes. And what that refers to is how much uh, the program can actually straighten out your wobbly lines if you want them to. So I'm going to draw kind of a, a shaky wobbly line here. And let's say that I've just drunk a bunch of coffee and I can't draw you know, a straight line and everything just looks kind of wobbly. And that's great you know, if that's your style. But for some people, they just wish they had more smoothness or they're drawing something really technical. So as you start to ratchet up the smoothing, what it's doing is it'll actually smooth out the lines as you're drawing them. So I'm going to draw another line. I'm going to try to be equally shaky. And as I let it go, watch it, and it just smoothed it out. This setting labeled smoothing has to do with how much it simplifies the center line of that stroke. But then there's contour smoothing, which specifically controls how much smoothing is going to happen on the outer contour of the line. Underneath contour smoothing, we have a drop down box for the shape of the brush itself. If you click on this shape, you can choose the default round one, the square brush, a, a straight up and down chisel brush, or any number of angles of chisel brush from there. I particularly like drawing with these uh, sort of 45 degree chisel brushes. So those are very nice. These various shapes are one aspect that's not available on the bitmap brushes, uh, just as smoothing and contour smoothing are not available on bitmap brushes. Uh, there is also texture, which you can apply to a brush. So when texture is applied to a vector brush, it's basically telling the vector strokes, pointing them in the direction of a contour file so that they can uh, combine themselves with that vector file. It's a sort of a complicated way to describe it. But I would say that right now, you know, there is no texture. But if I want to add a texture to this, I have that option where I can check off this box it says texture tip and now I can control the hardness of the brush and this is without any other texture file needed so a very very hard brush will be pretty much indistinguishable from the original vector brush but if you make it really really soft then it has a softer edged more of an airbrush feel the only problem with that is that when we're in the vector area and you try to erase He's a soft brush line, it still ends up looking uh, looking a little strange because the eraser itself is not soft. But let me go back to the brush. So you can control that under the textured tip. You can control how much opacity is in this line. Again, these are very nice effects, but now that we have the capability of working with bitmaps, we also can do that in a bitmap layer too. Anyway, you can also control the minimum opacity as well as the maximum opacity. If you decide to import your own textures, you can do that. You can create texture files uh, of anything that you want. They uh, need to be target files or Photoshop files, and you need to import them through this method. You can select a texture, check that box off, and then click the folder, and it's going to let you navigate to someplace on your computer that if you already have a texture that you've either imported or created. So in this case, a window has opened up 
on my computer where I've navigated to the place where I keep some of my resource files for uh, my projects, etc. If I know that I'm going to be dropping in uh, some artwork, I keep everything all together in the same folder. And here's a texture file called noise.targa. I'm going to double click on that and now you can see in this box that the, uh, the texture is now visible in this box. You have a slider here for texture scale and you can preview what that's going to do up here in the preview pane. So for instance, if I make the texture scale very large, then that texture is very grainy. And if I lower it down, the texture is more smooth and maybe more naturalistic. So when I draw with it, I'm going to raise that opacity. And now it looks like a more organic line. If I make it a little softer, I can keep playing with it a little bit until I get a line that I like. You can play around with those settings quite a bit and create something that you really like and that you want to keep.